everybody, it's Debbie here. Welcome back to my Crafty Den. If you're new here, then welcome. And if you're returning, then welcome back. Um, today I am working on some Valentine DIYs. I hope you enjoy them. Most of them are using what I have on hand and trying to upcycle and repurpose old items. I um, am trying to do a no spent for January and February. So this is what I've come up with for some Valentine decor. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and let's get into it. For this first one, and this is all, it's so, so simple. So for this first DIY, I am making one of these uh, rag strip banners. And all I've done was taken, I have some fabric and it's just a cotton fabric and it's this really, really pretty red and white floral pattern. And it's just perfect for Valentine's Day. So I took about a 14 inch piece of it, um, 14, 15 inches. I didn't measure. I just went like this and I ripped a big long strip from one side of the fabric to the other. Then I took my scissors and I just knit the ends all the way along one side, about little one inch um, cuts, tiny little cuts to get it started. And then I took each one of those and I ripped off a strip like this. So all I'm doing is taking this piece of jute twine or jute rope and it looks like this. It's a great big ball. And I got that at Dollarama, $4 for this great big roll at Dollarama. And that's the second one of those that I've purchased. They last for a long, long time. So all I'm doing is, is looping it like this, my fabric, laying it over top of the rope. Then I'm reaching through that loop and grabbing both those pieces and pulling them through like this. Then if you hang onto the rope, to give it a little bit of, you don't really want to make it taut, but you just want to be able to pull on this and then slide it down. So that's all I'm doing. And if you have to give it a little tug to tighten it up once it's on there, then that's perfect. So I'm not bunching them together really, really tight. I'm just barely touching them. Some of them even have a little space. So I'm trying to space it out a little wee bit because I don't want it to be a great big bunch. I want it to be like this. So that's all I'm doing. I'm taking the strip. I'm putting my fingers in the loop here like this, sliding that under the rope and then pulling it taut. You know how to do this. You know how to, you know how to just make a loop and tie it on. So put it on there and then slide it over. So I have about 40 of these strips cut. So however long, however long that goes, I keep wanting to put that loop underneath, but I do want that little loop at the front um, on the same side of all of them. There, I want this little piece that goes across the front on the same side. So I'm going to carry on and finish this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. But that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to carry on and finish tying these on here. And then this one will be done. So I got to the end of my strips. This is quite long enough. It's about um, 30 inches. Not really big, but big enough for what I want. All I've done to finish the ends is tie a little loop in the jute rope and I am going to cut it off. So I didn't even cut my jute rope before I started. I just pulled off a piece, tied a loop in the end and started knotting. So that's how easy that is. And yeah, so it's just, that's, that's how cute it is. I am loving this, just loving it. So the next one I took 
some. This one's almost done, but I left one unfinished to show you. So I used some foam core. And the, it's the poster board that you get from Dollar Tree. So I used a piece of poster board. I free-handed a heart, just free-handed a heart, cut it out, and then cut out some more just the same size. On one side, I glued some um, scrapbook paper and we just used a black magic marker to write on the front and then I used some stickles, some of my pink stickles to sparkle just my letters, so just a little bit of this. And then to finish off, I took that same jute rope, this, this rope right here, and this rope just goes on forever and ever and ever and I took my hot glue gun and I started right here with a little bit of glue and stuck that right down in there like that so that it would stick on and then I just went all the way around the outside edge with the hot glue and put that jute rope around the outside edge to finish it because you're when you cut something out with scissors with that foam core or that foam board um it has a pretty rough edge and it needs to be finished with something so this works good for that just a little and try not to put too much on there i'm barely squeezing that trigger there and I need a little bit more off the end of that. There. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to string through these. So from the back to the front and back. There, like that. So I'm just going to slide this down, then I'm going to put the next one on the same way. Now I did this because I thought it would help these to hang a little bit better, and I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking the way that that looks. So I can just leave them an inch or two apart, and then string them. So I'm not going to figure out exactly where they go until I am ready to put them up. So I'm just gonna leave myself some cord at the end and cut this off so that I have lots. And what I like about this is that it doesn't take anything to put it away. So that's not gonna take up any room to store. So, I'm but so using this again, the next one that I'm going to do is this heart wreath frame. I am going to cover this with some jute twine. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go right around this bar that joins the three pieces of the frame together. And that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to take this And I'm going to stick it down like that. Then I'm going to start wrapping. And I started in the middle here because I already tried once to start at the bottom. But the cord just wants to keep sliding down that way. So I am going to go around like this. So I'm just going to go through. like that and I'm just going to keep wrapping around. So I've got this all wrapped and I'm going to put a string on the back. So all I did was tuck this under one of the pieces of twine going around and it's a piece of smaller twine and I'm going to go over here onto the other side, find a piece that's well in there and I am going to give it a tie right there. So that's all I'm going to do to make a string to hang this up. Tie a couple knots on this. And cut the ends off. 
so and that will hang it quite nicely I think so and I'm not gonna add anything I was going to put a bunch of stuff on this um, that was my initial plan I was gonna put some of these foam hearts on here the red and the white ones and then I was going to put a few little florals and things like that but honestly I just like the jute heart so I think I'm gonna leave it like this it's very rustic when I was done I took a bunch and I wrapped it around the bottom so that I could give this some dimension and I like it I just like where I went with it so I wrapped it all watching TV last night and left it till this morning to come in and take a second look at it and yeah I just like it like this so So the first thing that I'm going to do is take this Deco Art Crafters paint. I'm going to finish this bottle up first. And I have three little pieces of wood here. Now these are these are five and a quarter inches wide. They have rounded edges. They're just cutoffs. Um, my son works at a lumber yard, and every once in a while he'll just bring home a basket of cutoffs for me but you could use any piece you could go into Home Depot and grab a little piece of wood you could um, you could use anything that you want to anything that's flat mostly just the flat surface here is all I'm using so I am going to, I'm going to paint from white so let's get that done So I'm just going to plunk my paint right on there and spread it out. So I'm going to paint these all the way around. And I'll probably be needing two coats. And I am going to, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to give these all two layers of paint. Okay, so I have two packages of these small wooden letters. So these are the ones that are about just over an inch high, an inch and a half maybe. When you take two sets of these letters, you can get X and O twice. I can get D, H, and LH because I needed two H's and I needed two L's to be able to spell love. So that's three O's. So what I've done was I took the Q and I nipped off these with my scissors and then I just took an emery board and smoothed that down so that I would have another O. And I am going to paint these and I'm thinking that I might really, really like, let me put this down here. I might really like this metallic paint and it's in the color Worn Penny. Um, and it's a really, really deep copper, a really deep copper. So I'm going to paint one of these letters and see how I like it. Paintbrush. And I'm going to, I've used this paint before. It's just such a nice color. And I'm going to paint this. And it comes out there, and to me, it kind of looks like a deep rose gold. So I think that's what color I'm going to go with for the X and O, X and O. I'm never going to get all the paint off of my fingers. Never. I should have put rubber gloves on, but...
Yes, I like that color. So I am going to paint the X's and O's this color. I'm going to paint the DH and the LH. And I'm going to paint the Love. But I'm going to do them differently. I'm not going to do them all the same. And I'm going to put these on the boards. And and um, I'll show you what my final idea is. So I might be jumping the gun a little bit, but I think these are dry enough to work with. And I want to, so what I've done is I've just been laying everything out, as you can see. So I'm just laying all my letters out on my boards. And this one with the LH and the DH, I just used a black marker to do a heart and write forever and put the little end and I'm obviously going for a look of a carved tree. You know how when you're young and in love, you do the heart and you carve it into the tree. And I don't know if people do that anymore, but we did it in when I was young, <laughs> younger. We did it. So I am just going to glue these letters on. And I don't want these ones perfectly straight. I don't want them perfectly straight because um, I can't remember that when you carved into a tree that you ever got things perfect. So maybe a little bit off like that. So, and that, so that's what I'm going to do for the first one. So I've got these down here. Now I've got this twine. And it's the thin twine again. So I am going to just take it and I'm going to wrap it like this around the bottom of the board. Just enough like that. And give it a little tie. Maybe I'll pull that out from underneath there. Give it a little tie like this. And do I want another knot and then put a bow on this? Or just, I think I'm just going to tie this. No, I want a bow on it. I'm going to do another knot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, sometimes you're just not quite sure. But I think I'm, I'm going to want a bow there. So like that. And so there's this one. I really, really like this. And a little bow, I think. I don't want massive big bows on here, but I do want some. I still got bows left in here. Most of them are pretty big. But here's a nice little one. So we'll just type, we'll just put that one there. And set that down into the glue. So that's the first one finished. I think that's cute. Very farmhouse ish um rustic i was thinking about distressing this but i don't think i want to this is something that i'll put up i'll put out every year and i'm sure the paint will get chipped and banged off of it over time and um yeah so with this one i think i want to put the twine at the top first so the same thing, I'm just going to take this twine, but I'm going to wrap it around the top of this. Just like this. Because it's a set. But they don't all have to be the same. So make a knot. And another knot. There. So, and that one. And trim these off. And 
And there, I have three really cute little signs. I'm looking for something. This what I did. What I did these for. I'll do them so that you can see them. So I did these so that they would stand up at the top of my china cabinet because I don't have much on the top of my china cabinet right now and I just wanted something to put up there. Okay, I have this one that I did up last year and I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not crushing on the color this year. Last year I was liking these muted colors. This year I'm going for more traditional colors, the pinks and reds and um, you know, some shiny and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to give this another coat of paint. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I've decided I'm going to cover it with fabric. Um, I still have a lot of that red and white floral fabric left. And to tie these in together a little bit better. Make sure I have the glue off. I pulled everything that I had stuck on here off as much as I could and I had some beadworks across here so I think it looks like I took a little bit of hot glue and stuck it on there that's better there's nothing there now so I'm going to give this a coat of white paint And I'm doing this just because it's white and red, the fabric that I'm going to cover it with. So any color at all when I Mod Podge a thin cotton is going to come through the white part. And I don't want that. I was going to sand all this paper off, um, but I'm not going to bother. It'll just, um, it'll just stay down when the fabric's on there. I'm just stippling this because it'll give it a little bit of texture um, for the fabric and the Mod Podge to stick to when it dries. And there won't be any brush marks underneath the fabric. Like no swipey lines. But anyway, this is dry. I let it dry for a couple of hours. And I'm going to put this fabric on top of it. But what, instead of cutting this out and trying to put the fabric on top, I'm going to put the fabric on top first. Then I am going to cut it out. And if I have to, I can use something to edge the um to go around the edges to make sure that it's got a nice clean cut. So I've got matte Mod Podge and I'm just going to use this one right out of the jar because I want to make sure that this is on here really good. So what I'm going to do with this to make sure that it's on easier and this is something that I actually learned from my husband who used to install carpet and vinyl and if they had a great big piece of flooring to put down and it had to go around many corners and things like that and they could install it in one piece but what they did was they would put part of it down now that's I put a nice amount of Mod Podge on there and it's actually coming up through this so it will work really well then pull this back and put the next bit on so that's what I'm going to do here to make sure that I've got my edges and everything really really good so that's just a little trick if you're trying to put something on. It's much easier to do it like this than it is to try to put it all on at the same time. This ensures that the Mod Podge is nice and wet as well when you're 
laying your fabric on top. So I'm not stretching this fabric at all. I'm just putting it on here and pressing straight down. So I'm just curious as to where everybody comes from and who, you know, who lives in our winter and who lives in a different winter, different climates, I guess. We're in a deep freeze. It was 28 degrees below Celsius um, yesterday morning when I got up and went to work. Nippy, just a bit nippy. And um, the resort that I work at, um, we have we um, sponsored or didn't sponsor. We hosted uh, a dog sled derby, and we host this dog sled derby there every year. And um, it was the dog sled derby this weekend, and I saw a van, like a, a utility van. Um, in the parking lot that had a dog sled tied to the roof and was thinking about the poor people in Newfoundland who have been hit with that horrendous, horrendous winter storm and thinking that they probably could use a dog sled or two or three. Um, my thoughts and prayers are with those people. There's a lot of people there that had no hydro and... They were snowed in. I mean, the definition of being snowed in is when you open your front door, you can't get out. And those poor people were snowed in. I feel for them, really, like I really feel for them. We have probably 18 inches of snow here. And uh, and these frigid cold weather temperatures and it um it's awful enough here without even thinking about what they're going through i can't i couldn't even imagine it couldn't even imagine it so yeah my heart goes out to them absolutely what they're dealing with right now if if there's anybody that comes from one of those you know one of the more temperate climates where they don't get snow and cold is when you have to put a sweater on to go to the store. Um, I think that it's hard for you to imagine what they must be going through, but I can tell you it's probably not good there right now. So, yeah, I go out in my 28 degree below zero morning and I think I'm think and all I could think of was thank goodness I wasn't out there. Yeah, so... My prayers are with them, and uh, I really hope everybody manages to get through. I think there's people out there yet that don't have hydro, but I'm imagining, or at least I'm, I hope I can imagine that everybody has at least some wood heat for backup, or if you live in a place that's that cold and, the, and gets those kinds of storms, one would hope that they had things set up and they could take precautions but I know not everybody can not everybody can afford it and oh, there's a thread I don't want on it on the top of it so yeah so all I've done as you've seen is is um covered the letters laid this down and now I'm just going over the whole thing like this on the top and the reason for that is that when this dries and I go to cut this out with my exacto knife or my scissors or whatever I use then it's, this fabric is going to be really really stiff and it's going to cut fairly easy so I'm going to let that dry this was the matte mod podge that I used I think this is going to be really pretty Okay, so this is dry. This looks fabulous, by the way. Um, it The camera isn't even doing it justice. So I took my scissors. I took these little pointy, you know, uh, fussy cutting scissors. And I cut and I went as close to the edge all the way around and cut that off. Then when it was all cut off, I'm just I'm just finishing up a few little pieces. So I have this really 
horrible. I wouldn't use this on my nails because it cuts like um like a cross saw almost. But all I'm doing is with this, I'm putting it on here and shoving it down. So on every edge, all the way around, I just took this. And even though I cut close to the edge, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be a nice, perfect cut on this edge. So all I did was went around the whole thing. And now this, if this was paper, that would come off of there a lot easier. But I've gone around the whole thing. And that's what I've done. I've just kept going like that. Now this is a horrible, horrible nail file. Um, I use a really fine emery board on my fingernails. But it does a really good job for that. I knew I was going to need something a little bit stronger than an emery board for this. This is really nice. I'm glad I did this. I love this. I think it's so pretty. So, so pretty. So just look. Just look at how pretty that is. So I really, really do love this. Um, as you heard. So, this is fine on its own. It would sit, you know, on a little shelf or something like that. Or on the back, it could even hang on a wall. But I am going to take this jute wreath and this love and I am going to hot glue the love on top of the jute wreath. I think these hanging on the door would look just fabulous together. Very simple, plain, and um, very country, cottage country style, which is my, my style is a cross between farmhouse and cottage country. Um, very eclectic and both those things, both cottages, you know, the family cottage and the old farmhouse are usually a mix of things that have been collected over many, many years and repurposed or put together in a different way. And, um, yeah, so that's that's a lot of my style. So these are going to go on, or this is going to go on here. And I've got right where it's going to go. So all I'm going to do is flip this over. And I know there's going to be some here, some here, some here, and some here. So I am going to put hot glue. And I'm going to put quite a bit some hot glue there some hot glue there some hot glue here i'm hoping that's the right spot and thinking that this will stick down now this a little bit lower so that could have been over a little bit i could put the hot glue on this side right here so that's what i'm going to do put some hot glue here like that and then just hold this down until it dries I think I need to turn this a little bit and put some under here so I'm just going to give a little squeeze under there don't let any come out. I don't want it out. Take that off of there. I don't want anybody to see that. There. <laughs> so hold you down. And I'm just going to hold this down until it sticks on. Then I'm going to go out and I'm going to hang this on the door. I'm going to set up the rest of the items. And I'll show you what I've done with everything that I've made today. So this is the wreath, the heart, the jute wreath with the love sign on it and the garland hanging on this. This is a uh, glass panel door 
that goes out to my mudroom. And I just think that these are adorable here. So I'm really happy the way that that turned out. And, and here is the top of my china cabinet. Um, little shelf above it and looking very cute. I must say I love the three Valentine signs. Um, the three different heights. I'm, I'm really, really liking that. So happy the way that those turned out. And if I just pan over to the right a little bit, I have the shelf that goes over my coffee bar. And these, here, let me get steady so that you can see these little hearts on this banner hanging up here. Very cute. So loving how everything turned out so that's um let me see two garlands the heart the love and these are actually five but i'm just going with four because i actually turned this one into one so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and that I gave you a few ideas for some simple repurposed items to turn into Valentine decor. So if you did, please give this a thumbs up. By all means, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It would really help out my channel. And I will see everybody in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye for now and have a really great day.